Perfect. Thank you so much, Yasek. Thank you, Praveen. Tell us what we have here. So uh, Mitsubishi Electric has an advanced development uh, platform called Flex Connect. And what we have here is the Flex Connect IVI system, which stands for in-vehicle infotainment. And um, what it is is a platform for developing the latest uh, user experiences that uh, we might want to showcase um, to our customers. So uh, this particular demo, uh, we're showcasing a few things. Um, the unique thing about this one is that we have three screens. One is a heads-up display uh, mounted above the, um, uh, the dash there. We have a cluster display as well as a center stack display. Um, whereas traditionally, the, um, <laughs> traditionally each of these uh, displays would need to be uh, powered uh, and generate the graphics by uh, its own individual processor, mm -hmm. what we're actually doing here is generating the graphics using a single processor, um, which affords us the ability to run a single operating system um, that enables us in turn to uh, create some really cool user experiences. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, we can start, uh, when, it, when you start the system up, you see uh, the various areas that you can interact with, the domains of climate, communication, media, navigation, and um, you can actually start, um, uh, for example, the media player here, and you'll hear it here in a minute, and uh, using gestures, you can actually swipe content from your center stack to your cluster. So by just a simple... Mm -hmm. Uh, a swipe gesture, you can move that in and out. And you can also uh, make that pop in and out of your heads-up display. So um, you might not be able to see it from mm -hmm. in the camera's perspective, but you can see it from the driver's perspective going up and down. Right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, similarly, you can do the same thing with the uh, climate. You can bring that in and out of your um, cluster there and uh, navigation as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, we're trying to showcase here is um, our partnership with uh, Movimento, which uh, allows us to perform over-the-air OTA updates. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a very familiar experience to anybody who's owned a smartphone, um, applying an update to iOS or um, your, your Android phone, uh, your Samsung Galaxy, whatever it might be. Um, it's a very common experience, so we're bringing that experience into the vehicle. Uh, with our partnership with them. So it's as simple as actually uh, opening up an app and uh, checking for updates. And it found two updates. And at this point, it would retrieve them from the cloud and actually update the head unit or any other module in the vehicle that was uh, needing that update. So it would go through the, um, uh, the update and um, it can pull the the data over, uh, you know, it's pipe agnostic, so it can go over 4G LTE or it can go over Wi-Fi. Um, it can be scheduled, um, so the update can happen, you know, at 3 a.m. in the morning, or it could be um, done um, uh, by the user manually. And it could also get it through a tethered device. Mm -hmm. For example, a Wi-Fi um, connected uh, tablet or right. or right. Uh, phone. Right. So completed the update and we're done so any questions okay, so this this um, is, is a custom Android build solution right correct perfect and yep. and this um, the, uh, the the system is, is is it anywhere close to production anywhere close to any customer interest on mm -hmm. this yeah, so there is customer interest in it. Um, it's uh, back to your question, Android. It's uh, it's running a build of Android uh, Marshmallow, uh -huh. um, and so um, what we've done is actually taken the the um, and, and created the entire application interface as um, you know an Android app mm -hmm. itself, um, and that's being spread out over those those three screens. So. And this portrait mode display, so kind of building off of the Volvo the XC90. Mm -hmm. So. Well, is this the general direction you see going forward because it allows you so much of screen real estate and kind of like clean, very clean organization, menu structure and all that. So, and and real long real estate for, let's say, users to be very, uh, the user experience to be very seamless and convenient. Yeah. So is that kind of like a future direction as well? 
That's a really good question. Mm-hmm. I think as being in the advanced development area, mm-hmm. it's one of those things that we're still proving out. Mm-hmm. But one thing that we have been seeing is that uh, users, as their, their screens get bigger and bigger in, in um, uh, you know, with the iPhone 6s mm-hmm. and plus, um, you know, seeing those devices grow, um, they're actually, uh, when you actually do user research and study um, how are um, people interacting with touchscreens in their cars, they're willing to actually start giving up some of the hard controls that you traditionally have down here. Mm-hmm. So what do you do with that space? Well, you could, uh, you know, for example, here we've we filled it naturally with a portrait mode display. So. Um, Definitely, it's it's something that um, um, is something that we're experimenting with as a form factor. And one final note: so you mentioned that it's all running through one unified processor. So what processor? So does it really require a, a little bit of an advanced processor mm-hmm. that can support like three different displays and three different uh, organizations? Yes. So so it requires a processor that has the horsepower actually to um, deliver the content on the three screens. Um, and can run um, a, uh, an operating system um, that's unified, so single operating system OS. Perfect, Android. Thank you so much, Yasek. Yep. Thank you, Praveen. Perfect. Got it, sir?